Hey Remoras, it's me, Mr. Sharks. Imagine for me, if you will, you are a kid in the 1990s. If you can, you deserve a shout out or something because I can't. As a Zoomer raised by Gen Xers, I just can't wrap my head around Millennials. They were able to experience their childhoods in a fascinatingly unfascinating time. A time that I consider to be true Pax Americana. It's truly mind-blowing that there exists a time period that came so close to facilitating Epicurus's vision for happiness. Total atomic annihilation brought about by an evil empire was no longer something to fear, which led to feelings of invincibility in the West. Nothing could stop them, and nothing could hurt them. The biggest concern for the West as a whole in that small window of time was whether or not there would be dinosaurs to look forward to each year. It was quite a time to be a six-year-old. You were getting outstanding, timeless works of art at the same time as some specimens that made you say, <laughs> Oh yeah, this sure came out in the 90s alright. But it's the former in which our subject resides. Walking with Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, which we'll call to save time because pronouncing the full name shaves precious seconds off our lifespans, is the first and most iconic installment of the Walking With series, first airing in the United Kingdom on October 4th, 1999. It would go on to be viewed by record audiences, be lauded by critics, anger the shit out of paleontologists, and win a bunch of awards, including two BAFTA awards, three Emmys, and a Peabody Award. It blossomed into a franchise that extended well into the new millennium. It received sequels, a prequel, spin-offs, and a feature-length movie that has jack shit to do with the Walking With series. As for the show itself, it would act as a wildlife documentary not unlike those of the National Geographic. It totally comes off that the British have invented time travel! But unlike its little siblings amongst the main series, Dinosaurs well and truly is a trip back to the past that doesn't feel like a cherry-picked snippet of conflict amongst the animals. For example, it's a lot more charming to see the T-Rex as a protective mother than a mindless killing machine or a sapient cartoon character. Over the course of this six-pack, we will move through all periods of the Mesozoic and get to see the big-ass reptiles of the continents, the skies, and the seas. So, enough dilly-dallying, enough goofing around. Let's join up with Sir Kenneth Branagh and get right into this. Our journey starts in the present, with Kenny asking us a question that normally invokes quite a response from non-humans. Imagine you could travel back in time, to a time long before man. My grandparents certainly can, and they barely even remember World War II. This prompts a sequence showing the world rewinding by 65 million years. Through the years, we see the land shifting and the plant life changing until we end up in the late Cretaceous. Apparently, the Himalayas don't exist, and the Atlantic Ocean is only half as wide as it is today. As for the land, its ass is grass, and the fact that grass hasn't evolved yet is the lawnmower. But who cares about conifer forests or fern prairies? We're here for the dinosaurs, baby! Yeah, what better way to get kids hooked on your dinosaur movie than by telling them, Oh, we have a T-Rex! This is fun to point out, notice the difference in tone between dinosaurs and monsters. In Walking with Dinosaurs, we will show you how these magnificent creatures live. How they eat, fight, and reproduce. This is life's forgotten story. An epic war for our world. Sounds cool, but most will agree that the parts of monsters that more or less follow the dinosaur structure are easily the best parts in that series. Kenny, I'm trusting the BBC to go through with this, but of course we all know what happened 65 million years ago. I really hope you two didn't enjoy using your eyes. But why start at the end? Why not go back even further? Let's check out the Jurassic as well! A time when life on Earth was at its most spectacular. Sorry Kenny, I beg to differ. Life is pretty wacky here to be fair. There are no polar ice caps, there are no flowers, and there are no escapes from the reptiles. Dinosaurs are arguably in their prime, pterosaurs watch over the land for the dominant dynasty in China, and Britannia doesn't rule the waves, outrageously oversized marine reptiles do. And yet, we're still not far enough to get an idea of how this came to be. To do that, we must plant our footing 220 million years ago. Welcome to the Triassic, 
where the name of the game is Day. The goal is to make it through the day, and you win. Does that sound like a riot to you happy-go-lucky bundles of sunshine watching this video? Well, it isn't. It is a harsh place, dominated by deserts. Kenny, we're in Arizona. That's just how it is. But still, there once was a time when India was an island, so what gives? Well, this isn't the first time the world was dominated by deserts. And the most previous period in which that was the case is... Grizzly. You know it as the Great Dying. Everything was a shit show. Creatures were dying out in painful, agonizing ways. Being mummified alive, dissolving alive, watching everything you love to be taken away from you... alive... It sucked. I don't know about you, Remoras, but I'm pretty worried. I'll check in with Earth later. Okay. Last time we checked on the Triassic, we were painted a really good picture of things to come. This includes the fall of the non-mammalian synapsids and the emergence of the archosaurs. Specifically, the dinosaurs. Meet the Coelophysis, a theropod dinosaur. One of the creatures establishing the New World Order. They've already taken over China and are expanding their influence in a way no other dynasty has done before. You see, to grow your empire and enlighten the barbarians, all must be assimilated into the collective. You know, like teaching the language in schools, making them adopt your gods, tapping into their bloodlines. In this case, it's known as dynification, and combined with the hips that were inherited by Daddy Euparcaria, it's doing the Lord's work. Their numbers are rising, and they've pretty much become the Mothman of Triassic times. When something bad happens to an animal, a Coelophysis flock is there in no time to laugh at their misfortune. It's not just theropods, you know. The dominant reptiles of the Mesozoic are all establishing their stranglehold on power at this time. Such as the Platyosaurus of the Sauropodomorphs. While the Coelophysis utilizes speed and quick reactions to their success, the Platyosaurus' strength comes from the fact that they are big. Too big for any carnivore of the late Triassic to take on. That fact proves to be enough as there is not much else to say. Herbivorous dinosaurs will become more batshit crazy, but just know that they wouldn't be so without their basic precursors. It's one thing to control the land, but what about the skies? While dinosaurs will stick to the ground, pterosaurs will rule from above. Petinosaurus, a little bugger that feasts on little bugs. Like the Coelophysis, he has his own specializations for his niche. And unless plane propellers get invented within the next few million years, they won't be letting go of their kingdom for a very long time. There's no easy way to say this, Remoras. Reptiles aren't even at their peak, yet they already rule the world. Come on, people. How did we let this happen? Nomamalian therapsids, what's your excuse? This is the Placerius. They weigh a literal ton and are 11 feet long. Pretty good for the time. Kenny even brings up their tusks, which are only the greatest invention since wings. But they have fallen from their days as the massive Diuk dynasty to the Diuk family treasure. Not unlike Electivire, they sucked at their highest level of existence and enjoyed a rapid descent to the bottom of the pecking order. Poor bastards. And they gotta compete with these guys that weigh four literal tons? Oh, very poor bastards. Kenny is not afraid to flat out tell us these guys are fucked. This world has been ruled by one group of giant reptiles for over 50 million years. But these ancient creatures have had their day. Alright, is there something that comes close to being a rival at this time? I'm getting depressed. Oh yeah, the Postasuchus. You're probably thinking, whoa, big lady, look at that queen slay. And you wouldn't be wrong to think that. Postasuchus was a member of the Roy Sukian family, which were rivals to the then small theropods of the Triassic. But I'll have you know that the title kind of spoils her fate. It's called Walking with Dinosaurs, Not Walking with Obscure Archosaurs. Hello? For you see, she's not hip like dinosaurs or their predecessors, at least not by a long shot. All she has going for herself is being the biggest predator on Earth. Normally, that would be a good thing, and more than enough. But Kenny explains to us that the Coelophysis don't really think much of it. They're like, no biggie. In fact, keep moving the goalpost back. We'll gladly keep marching towards it. After all, they do read good books. Taunting is just about all the Coelophysis can do to a Postasuchus, though. Because the only thing that can hurt a Postasuchus is another Postasuchus. You fools! Don't you know that this is what the dinosaurs want? Thor's out there, people! Out there! The fuck you doing?! You're in the middle of a drought! The dinosaurs are laughing at you! You just can't do that within the same runtime where Kenny says... When they excrete, they waste very little water. Side note, this scene caused a shitstorm in the scientific community. Apparently, this is an inaccurate and offensive display of archosaur urination. It should have looked like this or something, I don't know, and I'm not gonna look into this any further. 
sound like a racehorse pissing in there. For as long as I'm not getting ad revenue on the Mr. Sharks channel, I'm not going in depth on this. Quite frankly, there are a lot of inaccuracies and bold statements in this series. From creatures being misplaced in time, to some incorrect anatomy on the models, remoras. I'm not gonna go off on them unless they're absolutely ridiculous. If that's what you're into, I say watch Ben G. Thomas' video on the matter. Me, I'm here to explain the previously unknown complexities of prehistoric society, such as the downfall of the post -Asuchus. All in all, Kenny points out that these are ambush predators. Being on an open desert plain doesn't suit that lifestyle very well, unless you have awkward camera angles to pounce from. As the arid deserts consume the landscape throughout the Triassic, the success of the post will sink, including their chances of beating out the Coelophysis. So, what else is there to challenge the dinosaurs? Lungfish? Dragonflies that are still bitching about Queen Elizabeth? And over 100 million years ago, some took to the air and became aerial killers. Ah, uh, you too, Kenny. Listen guys, it might be time to make like a cynodont and beat it. Hey Kenny, what is a cynodont? The cynodont is a missing link between reptiles and mammals. Okay, that might actually be more offensive than mammal-like reptiles. Wow! Good model frame store! You guys should totally use that again six years later for a time period way before this one. You did? Oh, thank goodness, because here, it's not 20 million years away from its time. For real though, a lot of people didn't believe in the show because they thought it would be too expensive. It did cost a pretty penny, but it's safe to say that the dinero was put to good use. You guys did great work. Regardless, the Sinodons have understood the situation for a long time. The writing is on the wall. This era, it's over. Capiche? Over and done. They're small now, but believe me, they're only gonna get smaller. So, I don't like their chances if a full-on fight with a dino were to break out. It's hopeless. Might as well dig a hole and spend time with the wife and kids. As the sun sets, the pair have only one choice. It means shattering their unique parental bond. That is assuming they don't eat their own young. But that doesn't mean they're avoiding conflict with the dinosaurs. They're dealing with them in their own way. According to Kenny, sometimes they pull the oldest trick in the book. If your friend ever scares you with a loud noise to appear as a threat, just know that it's a tried and true strategy that has allowed species to last for millions of years. As the Mesozoic continues, the Cynodont descendants will get smaller and do everything they can to be out of the sight of bloodthirsty dinosaurs. This will pay off hundreds of millions of years into the future, as their descendants will prove to be capable of ruling the world. For the Triassic, however, the dinosaurs have the world's wildlife by the balls, and they will not let go for a long, 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 well, billion more longs, long, long time. That's just how it's gonna be. The world is now a dinosaur's playground. They will get bigger, more inventive, and more dangerous. And for the foreseeable future, this is a dinosized world. Actually, now would be a good time to check on Earth. Oh, that's a damn shame.